All right, I wanted to share a little bit more detail about this dream that I had um, January 10th. I made a community post about it, but I just wanted to explain it in detail a little bit more because I think there might be some like timing clues in this, but that's just my opinion. Okay, so I have my notes here just to make sure that I don't leave anything out. Um, in the dream, it started out where I was outside some neighborhood with my family. There were other people's families just walking around the neighborhood. Everything was fine. And all of a sudden, I hear people screaming that there is this, like, predator-type animal on the loose. And it's just going around the neighborhood, slashing people. And I remember someone saying, oh my gosh, that thing just swallowed that family whole. Like, this thing was going around swallowing whole families. And I don't remember if it was, it was either a panther or a mountain lion. I can't remember exactly which one, but it doesn't matter because I know that that is symbolizing Satan roaming around seeking who he can devour because he was literally, or this animal was literally devouring entire families, just swallowing them whole. So people were like freaking out and running and this thing was just on the prowl. Like it was like slicing and dicing people and just eating people whole. And I started freaking out because my family was out there somewhere. So eventually like this thing just, you know, leaves and goes somewhere else. And I'm like frantically searching for some of my family members. And I was able to find everybody except for one of my brothers I think there's probably a reason why he was the only one I couldn't find. Just like personal stuff, but I'm going to leave that out. So, um, I found most of my family, like my parents and my sister and one of my brothers. And one of my nieces, it was my niece and nephew. Just two of them for some reason. So, I took my niece and nephew and hugged him real close. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy that you guys weren't killed from this thing. So I held them close and they stayed right there with me that close for the entire rest of this very long dream. And I think I, I just wanted to keep them safe. So um, let me make sure I don't leave anything out. So eventually like that whole fiasco was over and I was talking on the family with my niece and nephew's mom who is now my ex-sister-in-law. And she's basically my ex-sister-in-law for a reason because she is just, um, basically, to be honest, she is the type of woman that your mom warns you about. Like, stay away from this type of person. She's very, like, unruly, and she will just make your life hell, and she's just trouble. She's a ver very bad influence so, for some reason, she and I were talking on the phone in this dream, which we don't ever do that, and we never have. But I think the reason we were doing that is because it was showing the spirit that she has. Because, as she and I were talking on the phone about, in the dream we were talking about like personal stuff to me going on in my life that I'll just leave out. And as I was talking, I was still walking through a neighborhood, but this time it was, I was walking towards, not past, but I was walking towards where in real life is a Lincoln High School. And I think the Lincoln, like Abraham Lincoln, I think is important because it's symbolizing the presidency because it's, you know, Abraham Lincoln High School or just Lincoln High School. So I'll explain a little bit more of that in a minute, but I'm walking in this area where Lincoln School is, and let me see. All of a sudden, she says, I don't feel good. And she was like, I'm nauseous, I gotta lay down. And I knew when she said that, like she was walking up some stairs, and she just kinda had to like, stop walking on the stairs and just like drop where she was and just kind of 
you know, she couldn't walk up the stairs anymore because she was feeling really sick. And I think she was feeling sick because, like I said, the spirit that she has, well, all this time I'm walking, there is this storm brewing outside, like a storm from hell. Like, it was almost black outside. The clouds were just dark, deep, dark, gray, black. And they were just building and building and billowing bigger and bigger and angry. Like, they, these clouds were so angry, it was almost like they wanted to growl. It was almost like I could hear them just wanting to growl. It was that angry and fierce. And the clouds just kept billowing bigger and bigger and darker and angrier. I've never seen a storm like this in my life. Not even in the movies. It was bad. Uh, so it wasn't storming yet. But I could see it brewing. And it was not good. And as I see it do that that's when she kind of drops and she's like I don't feel good so I'm not quite to Lincoln yet it's just I would say maybe a couple hundred yards out but I can see it and I'm like going towards it uh, but I never did pass it I never got right up close to it and as all of this is going on I'm walking towards Lincoln I'm on the phone with this ex-sister-in-law who has this just wild, unruly spirit. She gets sick and she just drops out. And I, the storm is brewing and it's dark out and it's something like from hell like you've never seen. And then I look over into the distance just above the horizon and I see in all of this storm brewing, there's two moons. And they were very close to each other. They were both lit up on the left side in the crescent shape. And I could also see the silhouette of the dark side of the moon. So the one that was on the bottom was almost literally touching the horizon, almost. And the one that was above it was just above it and slightly off to the right a little bit. I want to say just slightly above the trees. So they were both very low down on the horizon. And I want to say in most of the rapture dreams I have where I see two moons, and I've heard other people say this as well, is that they're always, or not always, most of the time they're like down on the horizon. So I'm not sure what that means, but that's where they were at. They were both lit up in a crescent shape. And as soon as I saw that, I just wish I could... Even if I was like the best artist in the world, I don't feel like I could capture what this sight looked like. With the brewing, huge, angry, black clouds. The atmosphere, you could feel something. You know how like in the summer, when a storm is brewing and like... They think maybe there's a possible chance for a tornado or something. You know how there's like in the atmosphere, there's just an eerie calm before the storm feeling that you get where it's like this storm is about to be bad. I can just feel it in my bones. That was the feeling that I had times like 50. So again, it's not storming, but it, the storm is still building and building. And then there's the sky's black and the clouds are angry and fierce and there's two moons on the horizon and when I see that it's just like it was the most it was like a fascinating sight it was like wondrous and like I can't even describe it because I've never seen anything like it not even in the movies it was just so like so real this dream was more real than me sitting here talking to you right now because when I saw the two moons I thought oh my gosh that is the sign that God is showing his people that we will see like the moment that it happened the moment that the rapture happens somehow that's what we'll see but it's like it, it came up so suddenly. There was no warning. Because you know how like everything that's been going on with 
the planetary alignments with Saturn and Jupiter and Mercury. You know how they they like warn us weeks out that, you know, make sure that you are outside next week or in two weeks to see this thing. But this, these two moons, nobody in the news or media or whatever had told anybody that this was going to be seen. So I don't know if it's like something supernatural that God is going to do or if this thing is already out there and it's just God has like a veil over it and then he's going to like take it out of the way as soon as it's about to happen. Because it's like, it's not, and I've heard hundreds of other people say, I had a dream that the rapture happened and I saw two moons that very second that we were gone. So it's not like, oh my gosh, we saw two moons and then tomorrow or the next day was when it happened. It's like a heads up, you know, no time left. It's happening right this moment. So it was a very shocking surprise to everybody. Nobody was told it was coming. It was just there out of nowhere. And I could hear everybody in the neighborhood say, uh, they were like, two moons, two moons. Oh my gosh, there's two moons in the sky. And everybody in town was pointing up at them and saying, oh my gosh, there's two moons. Everybody look. And I'm just kind of standing there looking at this site that's like, you couldn't paint this picture. You couldn't make it, you couldn't remake it in a movie or whatever. It was just so stunning and it was scary, but not like people weren't terrified, like shrieking in horror or it was just a shock and a surprise. Like where the heck did that come from? Look everybody. And I obviously, you know, I've been shown this tons of times. So I already knew what it meant. I knew it was coming sooner or later, but everybody in town just had no idea. So I knew because God had shown me, but everybody else was just like, you know, stunned that this thing was there so I saw it and I knew what it meant and I was like oh my gosh if there's two moons there that means right here right now drop what you're doing there's no time left in seconds this thing's gonna happen so I had my niece and nephew there with me and I like held them close and for some reason there was a man there with us also that I knew in the dream that he was someone from YouTube a man like a Christian with a YouTube channel but I didn't I didn't recognize him. I don't even, I have no idea who he was. So I think he just symbolizes like you guys that I know on here, like this community. And he was there with my niece and nephew. And I just, I held them close to me and cause I knew what to expect. And then as I'm taking in this site, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, this is it. It's finally really happening. Because when I tell you that this was so real, it was like the most real that I've ever felt. Like I was so much more alive in that dream even than I am right now, just sitting here. So I was like, it was almost as if it would happen right now as I'm talking to you. So I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is what we've been waiting for. This is what God has been showing us is about to happen. And here it's finally, really, truly, actually about to happen for real. Like, that's how realistic it was. And so I'm just, like, waiting, like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. I just can't wait to see Jesus. And then everybody in town, all of a sudden, they start saying, five, four, three, two. And they just start counting down from five. I don't know why they were counting down from five. Uh... But I knew it was like happening in slow motion in my mind because I'm like, okay, this is it for real. It's finally really happening. I didn't even know that I was dreaming. I thought it was actually happening. And so I'm like, okay, this is the real actual moment that the rapture is actually happening. And this part, I don't understand. I don't take it literally. So please let me explain when I tell you this because of what I saw. So I said in my mind, I was like, and you know, I just thought about leaving this part out, but it was there for a reason and I'm not going to leave it out. Um, I said, wow, since this is really it, I wonder what is the infamous day in history that this thing happens because we've all been wondering and watching and waiting 
what the heck is the day, what the heck is the date that this thing happens? I just was curious and wanted to know even though I was out of there. So in that slow motion countdown, I like whipped out my phone and I looked and it said January 8th and the year was blurred, blurred out. And again, um, when I had this dream, it was January 10th, but in the dream, there was, I didn't know what day it was. I just, I didn't even have a thought of like, oh, what? January 8th, that's already come and gone. I just knew it was January just because we are in the month of January. However, listen to me when I say I don't think it was literal. I've learned with God that dates and dreams are not always, if almost never, specifically meaning that literal actual date. I think what he was showing me there my opinion is what he's been telling me for years is that time is off. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. I'm not saying that that's when it's going to happen next year or the year after. I don't know. I don't even think it was literal. And I'll explain more why in a minute. But for whatever reason, you know, everything else in the dream was very realistic, very detailed, very from God. So why would I have that one random piece that doesn't matter like why would I do that so I was like when does it happen it said January 8th and I was like okay that's the day and then I go two uh sorry I go two one and then just like that uh it was like me and my niece and nephew and this YouTube person we were just like transported um we found ourselves in this room that was like a holding area or like a waiting room. Um, it reminded me of a room that you would see in like the back of a church where it was like a simple, humble room where you would have like maybe luncheons or things like that. It was like a, you know, just a simple like paneled room with uh, we found ourselves at these like utility tables that just like tables you would see in a room like that and there were candy and snacks at the table it's just like we just appeared sitting at this table in this small room and it was just us just the four of us me my niece my nephew and this youtube man that i don't know um we were the only ones in this particular room. It was like a room just for us for some reason. And so, you know, where where there's kids and candy, the kids are going to just help themselves to the candy. So that's what they were doing. And so I was very at peace in this room. It was just kind of like, oh, like finally everything is over with. And I had like no thoughts of earth whatsoever. It was just like, you know, this was... It wasn't a feeling of, oh my gosh, it's all over. It was a feeling of, oh my gosh, this is the beginning. And there wasn't this sense of like, like in real life, I tend to be kind of anxious and just want things to be over with and, just, you know. So I knew that Jesus was somewhere outside of the room. Like this room we were in was part of a bigger house or room or building and I knew, like, for a fact that he was outside of our room somewhere waiting to greet us. So, I don't know if this room was, like, a check-in type of place or just kind of, like, a transition place so that we didn't just, like, you know, up and find ourselves suddenly in front of him and just not know what to do with ourselves or whatever. And I've dreamt of this so many times before that I'm raptured and I'm not taken like straight in front of God. I'm not like in the throne room. I'm not at the wedding supper table. It's like I'm taken to this waiting room is the best thing I can think of. Just like this, nothing super fancy, it's just, you know, a simple room. And it's like a check-in type of place where you just, I don't really know how to describe it, but I knew that Jesus, like I was, I would look off to my left at the doorway and I knew he was out there because there was like this invisible, like frequency or something that there was something that connected me to him that I, I could sense his direction. 
like a compass almost. Like I just knew he was out there. I knew he was like out this doorway and down the hall and over there. Like there was that invisible connection between him and me. I just knew where he was. I knew he was out there, but it wasn't like I was anxious and like rushed. And I was like, oh my gosh, I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I got to go see him now, now, now hurry up, which, you know, me sitting here now, I would be like, you know, what the heck just you idiot, get up and go see him. You've been waiting all this time. Um, but I wasn't, like, rushed. I knew there was, like, all the time in the world, so to speak, to be able to do that. So I was just sitting there enjoying and just taking in everything around me. I was just sitting there with my niece and nephew on my lap. They were just having a ball with the candy. And I'm just kind of, like... You know how in movies when things are going on around the main character and they're just kind of like slow motion, like kind of off in their own world. So I'm just like, as all that's going on, I'm just slowly looking around the room and I look to my left towards the doorway and I know he's out there and I know it's like, finally I was where I wanted to be, where I was supposed to be and where I was going to be forever and ever and ever and I... I was safe. I never had to leave there. And I said to my niece, who was sitting on my lap, just eating the candy, I said, uh, let me make sure. Let me read what I said exactly. I said, we are going to live safe here forever, and it'll be awesome. It'll never end. We get to live with Jesus for all eternity, all eternity and it'll be wonderful. She smiled a sweet little smile at me. And then I looked again over at the doorway because I knew what was waiting for me. And I said to her, I said, let's go see Jesus now. And that's when I woke up. And when I woke up and looked at the clock, it was 9-11. So that was the dream. I think I left in everything. That's all I remember, at least. And again, going back to why the phone said January 8th I I don't think that's like showing me the literal actual date because I've had dreams before of dates and I've just kind of learned to not go by dates I've learned with God to go by events and to go by the heavens like the calendar in the sun moon stars and constellations that's what he's taught me after seeking him all this time and asking him things, and st I don't just ever listen to what somebody else on here says. I just, you know, I'll listen to what people have to say, but I just don't take everything as truth on here. I'll listen to what people have to say, and then I'll go to him and say, you show me the truth. You show me what the case is here. And just by doing that, he has taught me to not so much look towards a physical paper calendar or a, a date or anything like that, but to look for events and to look at how the sun, moon, and stars tell the story of the events that are going on in the world right now. There's several different channels on here uh, where Christians show how what, you know, the symbolism going on in the heavens is matching up to what's going on in the world now and what's up ahead. So that's just kind of what he's shown me to pay attention to. And one of the main things that I'm watching for as far as timing, like when the heck we get out of here, isn't so much, oh my gosh, what day of the week or what month or whatever. It's the biggest thing for me right now is this whole alien UFO divulgence stuff that they're pushing because we know that when the rapture happens, their excuse is going to be it was aliens. It they they were all abducted and the aliens took them out of here because all those Christians are so useless and you know always shoving this stuff down our throats and they're crazy conspiracy theorists or whatever. So we have to like since that's going to be the excuse and the main thing, we can see how close we are to that because even though for years and years they've been pushing the whole alien UFO agenda. It's never been as much as it is right now. And just today, actually, I saw where they either already did or about to do some sort of downloadable file 
released to the public that people can just download and just glean all this information out of it about the quote unquote truth of UFOs and the government and everything just for everybody to freely have access to. So, you know, they got to get that pre-plant that on the forefront of people's minds, aliens, aliens, UFOs, so that it's prevalent in the forefront of their minds when we're out of here and they say, oh yeah, it makes sense. It must have been UFOs and whatever. So the fact that that's going to be their excuse and this week today, I hear that they have that downloadable link to whatever kind of file it is for the public to have access to, I'm like, okay, we're right there. And then, so that's like the main thing that tells me we're right there. And then, like I said, all these YouTube channels that are showing the signs in the heavens that are lining up to events going on right now and things that are about to happen. And then as far as me almost... Like, as I was walking in the dream, as the storm was brewing, like, I was raptured before the storm itself even actually touched ground or whatever. Like, it was brewing. It was nasty outside. It was dark and angry. But before the actual storm itself came, that's when I saw the two moons and we went up. So the fact that the whole point as I was walking was I was I had Lincoln School in my sight. And I never came upon it. I could see it, but I never did, like, come up to it or pass it. I was just a couple, two, three hundred yards away from it, I guess. So I don't even know why God would put that in the dream unless it had some sort of meaning to it. Just like the thing with the date that I saw on the phone. The only thing I can get from that is, you know, Lincoln was a president. And we know what's going on with our president and our soon-to-be quote unquote soon to be president I don't think Biden's ever really going to get in there long enough to take office I could be wrong but my personal opinion and just a hunch that I have I don't know I wasn't told this or whatever but you know as humans we have intuitions and feelings and opinions and my opinion is that anytime between now and like January 20th or 21st somewhere around there, even that first week or whatever, that something's going to happen that's going to take everyone by surprise and things are going to play out different than what people expect. And somehow, some way, I just don't see Biden and Harris getting in there for any significant length of time. I, I don't know what that's going to look like or how it's going to play out. Um, but I am one of those people that believes in the Bible when it talks about the seventh king, the sixth, seventh, and eighth king. The sixth is also the eighth. I've heard teachings of how, you know, Trump is the seventh king and that Obama is the sixth and the eighth. And God has shown us that Obama is coming back. So I, I believe that theory. So if Trump is the seventh and Obama is the sixth and eighth, I don't see how Biden could fit in there, like I said before, unless if just, you know, when you get Biden, you basically get Obama. So maybe he does get in there and just somehow, you know, Biden is taken out or they kill him off or they make it look like they killed him off. I don't know. But I just have this feeling that something big is about to happen where everything just goes completely berserk and this storm that's brewing right now, I don't know if we're, I don't know if this is the timing that we're out of here. I know a lot of people think that we're gone before or the week of, you know, the inauguration day or whatever because of how Obama has to come back. And we know who God has shown us that he is. And we can't be here long while he is, you know, in rule or whatever. But on the flip side, you know, there is that very, 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 very slim possibility, tiny, tiny legal uh, possibilities, something could happen where Trump could get in there and then start civil war. I don't know. 
So I don't know if this is when we go or if things are just gonna go a completely different way. I don't know and nobody on here can say that they do know for sure. But in this dream when the rapture happened, we were we were gone before the storm itself touched ground and happened. And before I ever reached Lincoln High School, which is symbolizing the presidency. So all of that could just be random parts of the dream, but it could also just be something that God put in there for a reason. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. I haven't really got anything else. So, again, please don't say that I'm saying, oh my gosh, the rapture is going to happen on January 8th. I don't know why that was put in there. I don't know if it was just saying in the month of January on the quote unquote eighth day because the Bible talks a lot about an eighth day, whatever that is. So I have learned to not take dates literal in dreams and to look more towards the events and things that are going on and see what God's calendar in the heavens is saying. So I don't know if it's just talking about the eighth day and as far as it being January just saying you know where we're at right now like the time for that is now could be for another year I have no idea at all I'm just sharing what I was shown and sharing my opinion which I am free to do and you are free to agree or disagree and I respect everybody's opinion about everything so let me know if you have any questions, and I will be back if he gives me anything else that I feel is important to share. So, all right, bye.